it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and I am doing a video hop along with some other people um, organized by Bay Grobe. And so when you watch my video, then you can go down below and click through the other videos until you get back to mine and you will have completed the hop. This is the Let Us Start With Art hop, which has been going on all year. There will just be one more hop next month and then this one will be completed because you know the new year's starting it's over so so this is uh, I guess hop 11 so if you use that hashtag hashtag let us start with art you can go and find all kinds of art and what this hop is about is things you can hang on the wall so there isn't any art journaling ATCs tags anything like that it's all it's wall art so canvases or things you can frame I'm using an 8x10 canvas panel today, and I decided to do some fall colors, you know, brown, not a fan, <laughs> but for fall and for the thankful season, it's a great, it's the right color because the, the, you know, everything is just brown now. The grass is brown. The, the leaves are falling and they're they're orange and red and yellow and all those earthy natural colors are what I, I was about for this one. So of course I started with black however which <laughs> I guess that's more of a winter color but um, I started making my abstract shapes and mark making doing some acrylic ink to start out with. So I, it's carbon black acrylic ink, and I used a small, a teeny tiny pipette, a little plastic pipette, to pick up the ink out of the bottle and to use it to just really abstractly make shapes and make them thick and thin and, and you know, smoosh them and whoosh them around. And then um, I also used the larger dropper that comes in the bottle to make some, some other marks, some rounded you know, dot type marks. And then I took my water brush and I, in a couple areas, I, I watered out, watercolored out the ink with a lot of water and a brush to make kind of a shaded area. Then I also have some different acrylic paint colors. There's a uh, raw umber and um, Titan buff and uh, I don't know. <laughs> Naples yellow. I know there's an orange. There's a um, probably one that's called maybe Sienna. I don't know. Anyway, brown colors. If you really need to know, I can uh, put them in the link below <coughs> the video. But they're just the colors that I have of brown. And I want to mix them together. I want to um, smoosh them around and put them around on my abstract piece. This is intuitive art. Abstract can't really be planned. You can't say, oh, okay, I'm going to do two-thirds, one-third. I'm going to put a circle here. I mean, I guess you could, but that's not really what it's about. It's about um, free-flowing ideas and just letting your brain connect to your hand and, and conduct the symphony. <laughs> so I'm just doing that. I, I, I don't have a plan. I don't have any idea except for that I want to do something that is to go with the November season, which it, we have, you know, Thanksgiving, which is all about being thankful for the blessings that you have. I'm thankful for all my art friends out here who are watching my videos and supporting my channel. And of course, the ones that I collaborate with and allow me to do these type of events Somebody has to organize it. This time it's Bea. Um, but I'm always thankful when I'm invited or when I join a collaboration like this. I like to see what other people make. And I like to offer it as something that my viewers would like to see. <clears throat> we like to support each other. And so, yeah, that's what it's about, being thankful. This color over here is a weird one. It's like kind of a peach. Um, came like that. That's the color out of the bottle. But then I, of course, I'm also blending. I've blended some of that with some of the rusty color. And I blended some of the yellow with some of the darker brown. 
and just kind of I'm mixing it up I'm adding it here and there I'm trying to leave white space it's really hard for me <laughs> I really just want to cover every single thing up I don't want anything left I want it all to be colored and so I fight that in my own inclination to do that I'm also using a lot of water and trying to give a little bit of a watery or watercolor effect even though it is acrylic but when you kind of um, fade it out with some water you can get some interesting effects so then after I was happy enough with all that color all those brown and, and gold and rusty colors I decided to do some collage I pulled out some neutral color papers from my stash I absolutely love this tissue paper and I think this one might be the last one I have I believe it was a sheet that somebody gave to me so if anybody knows where that paper came from or where to get it <laughs> I would like to buy some of that I have I, I have no idea where it came from but it's just so cool it's it looks like branches and berries and things but it's it's just off-white and brown and I just I've used it on quite a few collages now and I just I think it's an awesome collage paper so if anybody knows where that printed tissue came from I'd be super happy to buy some um, I also have a little bit of scrapbook paper that has some text on it. I have another piece of tissue paper that's really handy that has, uh, you know, fancy writing on it. I have some paper that is from a tea bag. So when you, when you drink your tea, you have the leftover tea bag. If you let that dry and then you open it up and, and get rid of the tea, you end up with this stained tissue paper and I just think it looks really great on a neutral you know if you're using any type of neutral background pieces to to make a collage either just to, to start your collage because I sometimes do that with neutral background layers on the, the bottom and then do my stuff over the top um, and also in this application it worked great too it's just uh, it just looks like age you know it just looks it looks like age it's stained and uh, maybe there's creases in it. it's just cool tea paper is really cool and I don't mean toilet paper I mean paper from a tea bag <laughs> my mom calls toilet paper tea paper and so I always think of that when I say it I used another piece of that interesting tissue and um, brought that kind of line shape over onto the other side added a little bit more of the stained tea paper I have that this other one here that has a, a leaf on it and that was from a jelly printing session that I had the other day uh, with leaf stamps and I have that left over and I, I wanted to put the leaf on there it didn't show up enough though you can't hardly see the leaf it's there but you just couldn't really see it so I had to mess around with it some more but I'm finishing up putting on my papers. These are mostly translucent papers, although I do have a couple pieces of scrapbook paper there. <clears throat> that one in the center is a different piece of scrapbook paper that had um, like dictionary type stuff on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I'm folding whatever excess to the back side and uh, making sure that you know all the edges are covered. This isn't a deep canvas. This is the type that you would put inside a frame. So this would look really nice in an eight by 10 black frame, which I will probably put in one because I think I have one in my studio. I bought like a six pack of frames, of black frames one time. And then it, also bigger ones too. I think they're 11 by 14 to uh, see what my stuff looks like in frames because it makes a difference when you put a frame around it. So then I got out the stamp that made the mark on that jelly printed paper. It's a maple leaf and I got out some inks and I used uh, dark brown, medium brown, and then like a um, dark yellow on the stamp. And then I'm trying to stamp it over the top of that other leaf. Pressing down really hard because of course this is canvas. It's canvas on a board and so you got to press to get that stamp in there. Didn't really have the effect, the 100% effect that I wanted. 
but it's still cool. It's still kind of abstract looking. It looks like a leaf that has fallen off and been laying on the ground for a while. It's got some holes in it. So I cleaned that up and then I'm going to go back to doing some more um, acrylic paint. I don't like the edge, the straight edge that that paper has. And so I'm touching it up with a little bit of paint. I'm kind of blending the papers into the background a little bit so that they're not so obvious, obviously stuck on. And I've got real watered down acrylic and I'm adding just, I want it to be like almost watercolory. When this piece is finished and all dry over, at least overnight, I'll spray it with acrylic sealer give it a few you know coats of that so that if I did break the bonds on the acrylic by adding too much water it'll still be sealed in I also am using um, India ink and acrylic ink and also I'm going to use a water-based pencil in a minute so I do want to make sure that this mixed media piece is sealed completely sealed up I added some darker diluted acrylic around the edge of the the leaf trying to darken up the edge just so you could see the top part of the leaf and then I decided that what it really needed was a contrasting color and so I decided that the best contrasting color when I'm doing all these browns is to use like a blue or teal because it really seems to complement the brown, orange, yellowy situation I have going on here. I just really think it's the right choice. So I used a Stabilo Woody pencil. This is a water um, soluble pencil and it's big and fat because it, they were designed for children. It's uh, blendable with water and so it's definitely, it's very water reactive. And so I'm just I'm adding some lines and some circles and just kind of bringing out some of the shapes <clears throat> on the piece with this color. I could have used acrylic paint. Maybe I should have, but I just thought it would be fun to use the pencil. It just has a different feel to it, using a lot of different ways of applying marks in this one. So then I blended that out a little bit because it does, it looks like crayon because it's like, you know, the, the pencil's bumping along against that canvas that's, that's glued onto the panel. So it's kind of rough and scratchy. So I blended it just a bit with my water brush just to get it not quite as crayon-y looking. Although it still does look a little bit scratchy, which I like the contrast of that. For, you know with the other smoother applied stuff also um, a couple areas well a lot of the areas since I was trying to go for that watery effect do have more of a scratchy uh, poor application <laughs> look like they probably needed another coat but I, I was intentionally doing that so I didn't put another coat over it to make it completely smooth now this pin is a brush pin called Pentel Pocket Brush. It has India ink in it, so black India ink. And I'm just filling in or um, darkening up some areas where maybe the acrylic paint made my black, my original black ink lines uh, lighter and I didn't want them that way, so I used the pen and I'm also connecting some, like some places look like the lines should be connected. And this is completely free form. Um, it's a way of adding my hand to the art, even though I used, you know, some of those lines were put on with, with collage and stuff. And I like to do this. This is one of my favorite tools. Um, this In this last year, I discovered it. And I just, I really love to make marks with this Pentel pocket brush. I recommend it if you don't have one. It's it's a type of brush that you can get cartridges to refill it when it runs out. And it has a very flexible brush on it, like a, like, like a water brush, except for it's just filled with ink instead. I like it. It's a good mark making tool. So then I wrote the word 
thankful with that pin because I thought that's what this piece was supposed to be about. It's the thankful season, grateful, happy to be where I am with who I am and happy for my friends that support me and collaborate with me. So thank all of you. Thank everyone. And next I added a little bit of splatter. You know, I like my splatter. I used that off-white Titan Buff type paint. And then I also got out a little bit of teal paint, acrylic paint, and put some splatter in the teal as well. Makes me happy. Splatter makes me happy. <laughs> I don't know why. It just does. It's just something that I enjoy. So then I just am looking at it, thinking about any, any touch-ups, any changes, anything that I might want to add. Do I want to add some more? Um, apparently I wanted to add some more, some more uh, acrylic, I mean, not acrylic, indie ink lines, I guess. Uh, the word needed some touching up. I ended up using a white Posca pen after the camera was off just to add a few highlights to the word so that it stood out more. I'm not sure that I wanted the word to be the focal point particularly, but I guess that's kind of how it turned out. It was supposed to sort of blend in, but I wasn't successful in blending it in with the other lines really. Added a little bit of Naples yellow around. Um, that color seemed to be a little bit absent except for in the collage. And I, those two pieces of that paper really had that color, that yellow, and it was making the paper stand out too much. So I added that color around the composition in a very random way. And that helped with those two pieces of that scrapbook paper that were very yellowy colored. <clears throat> and then I think, I don't know what else I did. Still adding yellow, I guess. I might add a little bit more of that diluted brown color in a couple areas where I felt like it wasn't there enough. Oh, then I decided maybe what I wanted was a drip. Um, so I did end up using a little bit of more acrylic ink in a rusty color. And I think that's what I... I put that line over there because I wanted something to come down in a a line on that edge just for some reason. It's what, how I felt. And I ended up doing it with dripping. So this is another bottle of acrylic ink. It has a dropper inside and you can just drip it. And so I did that and then I added it in a few other places. It's similar to that color on the right, but the one on the right has a little bit more red in it or orange, because I mixed it with orange. So um, <coughs> I needed to add this color in now that I've dripped it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give me a, a like, comment, subscribe, share. Be sure to go down below the video and click on the next link and watch theirs. Give them some love for uh, providing free content for you. And then click on the next one and the next one. And when you have come back to me, you've completed the hop. That's it for me. Thanks so much for watching for November's hashtag Let Us Start With Art. Bye-bye. <laughs>